Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is a very special show. My name is Ingrid Lemmy, and this is my show, American Dream. A show about people, their hopes, their dreams, their family heritage, and <laughs> most certainly, their realities. And he is my reality. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, my husband, Sunshine Lemmy. Yay. And I have to tell you, baby, Yes. Thanks for being on my show today. Well, you're welcome, sweetheart. I have to tell you, this is the only show I ever was nervous at, okay? So please stick <laughs> with me and uh, forgive me if I uh, don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Um, you don't get your husband in front of the camera every day, okay? And I'm doing television, obviously, <laughs> since 10 years. And he's the man where I don't get away with nothing, with anything, I should say. So I have to be true and stick to my guns right now and try okay. to be really, really honest. And uh, first of all, Sunshine, we won't let you get off with anything else than what the American dream is all about. Give us a little bit about, really, two minutes about your family heritage. Okay. Um, all my great-grandparents were born in Europe, except for one. She was born in this country of uh, immigrant parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all lived in the Midwest, uh, Wisconsin and uh, Iowa. Mm -hmm. Did they wear funny hats like you? or No, they, they wore different funny hats. The different funny hats? They, yeah. they, they had different funny hats. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, then they moved to Nebraska. Both my parents were born and raised in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was, uh, grew up in a migrant farm worker family. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to... 11 different schools, uh, several of them twice. Oh, God, you know, I'm so sorry. Before he was 14. Yeah. And that's when he quit school. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother actually uh, went on through high school. So she, their family owned a farm. Mm -hmm. And then they both moved to California. Your mother spoke German, right? She was born in a German family, and she spoke German until the first grade, uh, or until kindergarten. Then she uh, actually, she was one of the f unique people. She failed kindergarten yeah. because uh, she could not speak English. See that. Uh, so she sp spent the rest of her school career going to school with my uncle, her brother, her mm -hmm. younger brother. And they were in the same class the whole time. Mm -hmm. And the horse and the family all spoke English after that. <laughs> so I didn't get in on the German. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But obviously... <coughs> uh, Overall, we could say you grew up in uh, California. Yes, I grew up on a little farm in uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. We had uh, wine grapes. My parents knew nothing about grapes, but mm -hmm. uh, they learned. They learned. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we had cattle and hogs and sometimes chickens. And I was told uh, from, by your mother that uh, raising three guys Yes. She <laughs> baked pancakes until they came out of her ears because those three people, big people, ate a lot of pancakes. We ate a lot of pancakes. Yes. And we're not and little she, people. And she made fried chicken and all those things. Yep. We didn't grow, raise too many chickens, but we raised our own beef and pork. You did that. And got the chickens from the neighbors who yeah. had lots of chickens. Lots of chickens. On okay. the hoof, we went out and chopped off their heads. And <laughs> <laughs> fast forward, very fast forward because there is so much about your life, Sunshine, that I just can't. I have only half an hour, so fast forward, and uh, Sunshine meets Ingrid. Mm -hmm. Now, we maybe, hold on, we should maybe do a little bit about his history, because he is <laughs> well, driving me crazy about history. He obviously studied history or science. Yeah, I, 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 my bachelor's degree is in, in social science, but most of it was history. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I went to graduate school in history, mm -hmm. and I realized there's no future in history. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I actually uh, dropped out then and, and went to work. But I have to tell you that um, history is still until today his absolute favorite subject, no doubt about mm -hmm. it. And yep. whenever we go to any place of the country or the world, I'm getting a history lesson on what happened when and into all details. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Okay, now really fast forward, obviously, Sunshine met Ingrid. Honey, when did you meet me? I believe, I, I actually have the date, August 23rd, 1991. That's when you met yeah. me. Yeah. Um, 
because we went to that meeting at the Catholic Church yeah. in Montauk. Yeah. And uh, Bill Vaughn uh, introduced you. You're the first person. You're just standing outside there. I don't mm -hmm. know why you were standing mm -hmm. outside, but Bill introduced us. Right. And, uh, and, and I have to tell you that the meeting sunshine was like that. Um, he was having rather long hair, and he was having a beard. And, uh, and I looked at him, and I saw the kindest eyes I had ever seen. Mm. And I thought that that man would never hurt me. That's what I thought. And I also thought about the beard looking a little bit like Rasputin, <laughs> which I didn't care for necessarily. That I thought, you know what, there is potential. That's what I thought. So I just wanted mm. to say that. Yesterday we celebrated our ninth wedding ninth anniversary. anniversary. Right. As a matter of fact, we got married on Valentine's uh, nine years ago on top of the World Trade Center. Yes, and the uh, marathon. We got married, I think it was at 10.20 or 11.20 or something like that. We were and a couple. Every 20 minutes, they were marrying another couple. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, we got married there and then uh, down that long elevator and out to here at Gurney's and then uh, had our reception. A month ago, we were asked here at top of the World Trade Center if we could participate in a wedding marathon that was founded in New York City years and years ago. And it seems that it's gone from location to location and we finally found its home here at top of the World Trade Center, where since last night at 12.01, couples have been getting wed here at the top of the world and it's about 24 hours of weddings. So we're very excited about this program as well as finding its home in New York's most romantic and highest views. And uh, we this is the gentleman I'm going to marry in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, I have to let you know, guys, that three times we actually wrote off the wedding. We canceled she wrote every it night. Off. Three times in three days. Three times in three days. But we are here, we are doing it, and we are very, very nervous. Once about 20 minutes ago. In 20 minutes, right? <laughs> Baby? Yes. Do you love me? I still love you. <laughs> There is only one life before you. Go now to your dwelling to enter into the days of your life together. And may your days be good and long upon the earth. And now, Ingrid and Sunshine, as you have consented in wedlock and have acknowledged your union before this couple, I do now, by virtue of the authority vested in me under the laws of the state of New York, pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. Sunshine, you may kiss your bride.
the day from heaven. We were actually. You were say hell. No, it was from heaven. We were actually. Do you want to eat a little bit of this wedding cake? Who is this guy, by the way? Cats, cats, your tongue? Is he, is he by any chance? Is he your daddy? Yeah. Yeah. That's Smile Paul and Monty. Say hello, Mom. Hi, Chris and PJ. <laughs> Hi everybody. Valentine's. You got married on Valentine's Day. And? Was there any reason behind that? <laughs> was it because you wanted to celebrate love? Or no. be, being an angel? You want me to be honest? Hearts, you like I hearts? wanted the American dream on top of the World Trade Center. Who else gets married on top of the World Trade Center? That is true. So I said to myself, guys, it's a chance of a lifetime, I'll take it. And here we are, we are married. And was there any reason you thought of getting married there? Have you heard about other couples that got married there? Yep. See them yep. on TV? Yep. 54 other couples, and I heard about it through Laura Freeze. She came to Gurney's. She had a spa package done um, to get fit for the big show. She was the director of this whole thing. And this is how we met. We were talking, and she said, Ingrid, here's your American dream, and here we are. And then you said that's perfect for you, right? That's right. My gosh. Are you all ready? Very good. How is it being married with me? It's very nice. I, I have a good time with it. Yeah. You, uh, you know, you, you're, you're just as busy as I am. So, you know, it's nice when we, we actually do uh, come to the, in the same place at the same time and uh, take some time for each other. It's, it's uh, always appreciated, mm -hmm. I think, by both of us. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you that I do love waking up with you in the morning because uh, you are the only person I, uh, uh, I ever met who wakes up in the morning and doesn't have bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was oh, awesome. How would you know? I'm usually up before you are. <laughs> and he makes the tea. Yeah. And um, the way I want to go really is uh, into what you're doing these days. Yes, we are living together and uh, we definitely have gone <clears throat> and had our ups and downs through the years with our different <coughs> activities and our hobbies. Sunshine is very heavily involved in uh, um, the well, ambulance, right? Yeah, I'm about the same time I met Ingrid, I, I started uh, uh, with the East Hampton Ambulance, Village Ambulance as a volunteer. I didn't think I'd probably be very good because I don't like blood, but I thought I could drive the ambulance. And uh, 18 months later, I had uh, been through two EMT courses. I was a critical care tech, I was, I was, which is about as far as you're going to go as a volunteer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It takes a, a couple of years full time to be right. a paramedic. And uh, I, I was having a great time. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. I love emergency work. Uh, we had to leave there, uh, move to Arizona, which was kind of frustrating for the year there because we only had five ambulance calls. Yes, yes. And I went I remember all. that. <laughs> we lived for a year in Arizona, and uh, he was actually missing going on calls like he is right. doing here. Yeah. And then when we moved back, we moved back to Montauk, where I joined the Montauk Fire Department. Uh, I still had my certification, so I worked on that and uh, continued with the ambulance and then became a firefighter and then... Uh, mm -hmm. What does it take to become a firefighter? Uh, there's a whole bunch of classes, I don't know, maybe a dozen classes, uh, classroom classes, and then I believe it's six course, or six classes at the fire academy. Uh, one of them is, is the maze where you put on your gear and you crawl through a smoke-filled maze where you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. And if you come is out... Is that scary when you do that? Uh, well, it's not scary because you know it's not poison. And, uh, yeah, in, in fires, you can get you can be pretty scared mm -hmm. if it's a real fire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not too scary because it's, they don't use toxic smoke. Right, right. You know. Is it scary when you're on the ambulance and there is a chance that that person who you are driving there to the hospital could possibly die? Uh, you never like it, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, yeah. very rarely do you actually, have I had anyone actually die on the ambulance. Usually they're either already gone mm -hmm. or, you know, they die after we get there. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been pretty good keeping them alive uh, there. We did lose uh, one 
I think it was a year ago or something. I think it was actually the first time I remember actually expiring on us. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I think after a while, you, you, we do get a little hard about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't. Uh, I, I can understand why doctors don't have a great bedside manner because they just don't want to get too close. Sure, sure. You know, and and uh, and it and it happens. So. Yes. Uh, well, I have to tell you, I don't really know much about it because he goes up, gets up quite often in the middle of the night. Then the alarm goes off. And, uh, and then I turn around and I go back to sleep and he gets dressed and he leaves the house. And when he comes back, I usually don't wake up, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the time I do not even know that there was a call really going on, which I have to admit to my own embarrassment, right? Yeah, you can but sleep through them. I've, I sleep through them when it's not my turn. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but then he comes back home once in a while, and he's all cold, especially in the winter. And, uh, mm -hmm. and believe you me, I'm the one who was w warming him up, because obviously um, that's what wives do, right? No, that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, don't, please, don't get too mushy. Remember, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a show about you. Um, sweetheart, I want to talk about uh, a couple of years ago, I should say about two and a half years ago, three years ago, when you announced I am going to study emergency emergency management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd, I looked at you and I said, "No, you don't." Well, you didn't really put your foot down too much. You were you were you, were allow, you allowed me to persuade you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I got into uh, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, mm -hmm. and uh, I think just by the skin of my teeth, they told me that they didn't tell me that until about a week before classes started. Mm -hmm. uh, but luckily I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I finished my courses. I'll be graduating in June. I don't have any more anything else to do but wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I, I was working at that. I, 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 FEMA also has courses available. I took some from uh, the state which teaches the, some of the FEMA courses, uh, and there's a professional development series. I took mm -hmm. the entire thing in mm -hmm. about four months. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's online. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I realize this is what I want to do with the, the rest of my life. I, uh, you know, I'm, after a while, you can only, I can't go into too many more fires. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, uh, physical limitations. And so I'm going to try to do something that will continue in the field. Also, because I'm working here at Gurney's as, as director of continuity and compliance, which means that I, I take care of all the, includes all the emergency teams and doing all the emergency stuff and the preparedness and writing the plans and uh, all, all the stuff, which I found I absolutely love. I must have a talent for it. Yes. And it's pretty boring, this material. I have to say that. <laughs> Only if you read it, not if you write it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, I read a couple of pages and I thought, wow. But obviously this is what is required, what all those organizations, those national organizations and insurances want, yes. right? right? They want us to be prepared for what? Uh, any all hazards is is the way that FEMA puts it. It's an all hazards organization, so it can be anything from a, a terrorist attack, a, a, a riot, a, a natural disaster, a hurricane, a, a fire. Uh, the emergency management fields tries to treat those pretty much the same. We, the same people are responding. The same kinds of needs are uh, needed for recovery. You know you whether it's a fire or a hurricane, the building is down or damaged, you have to put it back together again. You know, how do we do that? Um, how do we take care of the debris? How do we take care of uh, all these things? Mm -hmm. And how to organize that before this happens? And, we, and the nice thing about doing it all in an all hazards concept is that you only have to do it really once. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference what the event is. Mm -hmm. You know, the other, other side of the event. Oh, is that what we you did the other day here at Gurney's where all yes. the directors when we, were when sitting? Yes, when I did that uh, exercise, I conducted an exercise yes. here. Yes, right. it was basically one scenario fits 
Oh. Yeah. Well, we, we use the hurricane scenario because yeah. for one thing, we've done it before. And the other thing is that we are going to be probably doing it again fairly soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's and a very good chance, or they're saying there is a very high chance that we are going to get another one of those 100 year floods or hurricanes, hurricanes or something like yeah. that? Well, you know, the chances are the same every year. You know, yeah. it's just one of these years, it'll get us. Yeah. So we, we have no idea. Right. So. But if this is indeed going to happen, and uh, let's say in, in the East End is going to be hit, and it is not necessarily Montauk, it can be East Hampton or whatever, it can sure. be South Hampton or any of those. I mean, you know, there is no prediction of where it should hit. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. so if that is something what is going to happen, then we need to be prepared, and if it happens, what's going to happen afterwards? Well, a, a lot of things can happen. But the worst case is, is the one we have to be prepared for, though. Uh, the not being stretched will probably be flooded, so that he, us out in Montauk, we're stuck. You know, we, we can't go east. We're, evacuation is, is going to be very difficult uh, for most of us. Uh, also, the... Uh, Fort Pond area could be, be flooded. We have a generator on one side and our main source of food is on the other, uh, the IGA. They're probably going to both be gone if we get a bad one in Montauk. Mm -hmm. Now, other places are going to have other, other concerns. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to, you know, continue to, to uh, look at that. Uh, and we have to look at it not just as, as a government, because the government is not going to be able to uh, be here. FEMA will not be here for 72 hours. We know that mm -hmm. already. They've already told us that. Mm -hmm. So everybody should be prepared to do have with a 72-hour uh, survival kit, you know, and should include things like your uh, Food and water, of course. Is that why we have so much water in the That's basement? That's why we have so much water in the basement, yes. Ah, <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, medications, uh, a lot of things that we, we wouldn't really think of all the time. But you have to sit down beforehand and make a list of what's needed for your family. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to think about things like if you're going to a shelter, your pets aren't going there. They don't have, we don't have any pet shelters around here. Yeah. So we're going to have to work out a way to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do these things ahead of time, you're not going to be able to do them uh, on the spur of the moment. It's very difficult. Now, I only can think Montauk because this is where I live. Yes. Um, where, are, where am I going? Uh, the shelters in Montauk are the Montauk School and the Montauk Downs. Okay. These, these are the... Uh, uh, shelters but for, if everybody goes to Montauk and let's say we have year-round people here, 3,000, mm -hmm. how many people do fit there and how many cots do we have? Prob probably not as many as we have people who are going to go there. Okay, so you probably know, I am not going to the Montauk school then, right? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I am. <laughs> You are, okay. Okay, so maybe we can sleep on one cot. Yeah, well, maybe, that you know, maybe we don't have to sleep. I, I, I'm just more, I just want to get through it right. so we can get into the next phase, which is recovery, and, and start uh, coming back from whatever. Okay, so yeah. whatever we have recovered now from means that her, the water is gone again. We all are shocked. No computers are working. Nothing works. And um, what is what you're doing now? What, what are we doing? Personally doing? First, first thing, um, and, and the biggest thing that's going to happen in any hurricane is debris. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been through a hurricane or you've ever heard anybody talk about a hurricane, debris management is the number one problem, mm -hmm. is what you do with all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. and, but then you have to house the people. You have to uh, make sure they have food, water, clean water. Mm -hmm. because uh, the water systems are pro probably not working, uh, which is why we have all that water in the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now I understand. And, uh, you know, we have to take care of those needs, and we have to reestablish communication with the, the rest of the world, uh, 
However, either either across the Napi, maybe by water, who knows? Uh, because we we are in a very vulnerable position, mm-hmm. and uh, just to get food and fuel to us so that we can get uh, back on our feet, we're probably going to have to do a lot of this stuff ourselves, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we the outside world is is can't help us. Amagansett has its own problems, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so they're going to uh, they're not going to be uh, doing a mutual aid here because. Mm-hmm. They're going to be hit hard too. Now I understand when I called the town of East Hampton and uh, asked uh, for uh, basically how much money we have in the budget, or I read it also in the Independent, there was really not much what we have for mm. not for <coughs> prevention because this is obviously not nothing what we can prevent, right? right. We have no control over that, but for uh, recovery to support us, blankets. Whatever, whatever it is, yeah. right? And there was really not much. Yeah, there, there usually is not much in a prep, preparation phase of uh, a disaster mm-hmm. uh, because it doesn't happen often enough, particularly mm-hmm. the major disasters. You know, last hurricane that came, even came close here was Bob, and there was a lot of trees down and there was electricity out, but uh, that was nothing as to compared to what could happen. I mean, you have to remember, Hurricane Bob actually missed us. Yes. Sure. You know. Absolutely. So, and, but and a rich community damage. like East Hampton. I mean, after all, at this point, we are East Hampton. All of us. We are mm-hmm. East Hampton out here. Okay. Uh, wealthy communities like East Hampton. I mean, really wealthy. And 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 there's no money for for. No. S- or, well, what's what, what what do you think? Why 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 is that? Why is that? Uh, I think we just tend to be apathetic. Is that what it, it, is? It, it's, it tends to be apathy. It's the same reason most of us don't have a ton of water in the basement. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, most of us don't have a, a stock of food. Most of us don't have a double dose of our uh, uh, prescription drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these things actually are pretty important when you don't have them. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, in my case, I would have to make sure, or you would make sure, that I have my asthma pills, which I need, right? Right, sure. So this is something what my husband probably would look out for. He would also uh, would make sure that I get immediately online because I need to be on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then some, and then some. Well, let's then hope some. that nothing ever like that happens. Mr. Lemmy, it was a pleasure, absolute pleasure, have met you many years ago, and happy anniversary. With this ring, I do the way. I do the way. I do the way. Defying the odds and opening doors. Now anything in life.